Full body tracking has been an awesome addition to my experience in VR. With it, I went from a questicle pleb, awkwardly shuffling around, to a force to be reckoned with, punting orphans into the stratosphere. <laughs> There's a couple viable options to get full body tracking for a Quest 3 headset. I personally went with Vive trackers and Valve Index Lighthouses because of their precision and reliability. Some downsides of the solution is cost and requiring PC VR. This won't work for Quest standalone. You have to run VR through your desktop PC, so make sure your PC is powerful enough that it can handle VR with not too much lag if you decide to go this route. For PC VR, you need to either use something like Virtual Desktop, AirLink, or Steam Link to connect your headset to your PC. Virtual Desktop seems to work the best for most people, so that's what I'll cover in this tutorial. If you're trying to set up standalone tracking, you may want to go with slimes. For everyone else, let's go! Oh, and also this is going to be a tutorial for non-continuous tracking, so you have to calibrate every now and then. You can get continuous if you buy another tracker and put it on your head, but I'm going to cover that in a future video. For our shopping list, you're gonna to need to buy at least three trackers. So this tracking setup is just gonna work for your feet and for your waist. To get your elbows tracked, I'm gonna use the Quest 3's inside out tracking using its cameras. You're gonna to need to get straps to affix the trackers to your body. The EOZ straps have the best reviews. Now on top of that, you're gonna need lighthouses. You need at least two and at most four. The trackers need to be able to see a lighthouse to know where they are. So more lighthouses prevents loss of tracking from occlusion. I only have two and they work for me, but other users report much better performance, even going from three to four. So get what's within your budget. Okay, setup time. To set up the lighthouses, you're gonna want a drill and a stud finder. Some users report them working fine resting on a shelf, but for this tutorial, we're gonna do it the way that's recommended. If for whatever reason there isn't a stud where you want to mount it, you can also use the included drywall anchors. So you're going to want to set the lighthouses up in opposite corners as long as it's within 5 meters of each other, though some users say 7 meters is fine. You want them to be above head height, so at least 2 meters up, and once they're mounted, angle them to point them at the center of the play area. The lighthouses don't need to be able to see each other, and they don't need to be the same height. You are going to need to plug them in, but their cords are quite long, so that shouldn't really be a big deal. So that's the lighthouse is done. For the trackers, once they arrive, you're gonna need to charge them up. The LED light will show orange to indicate that it's charging and it'll go solid white once they're fully charged. Once they're done charging, you can reuse the same cable you were using to charge them to instead power their receiver dongles. Such a silly word. Sick, that's most of the physical setup done. Like I mentioned earlier, you're gonna want virtual desktop if you don't have it already or some other PC VR software. Something that's confusing here is there's older versions of virtual desktop on Steam. They're entirely different programs and not what you need. To get the right one, you're gonna log into the Meta Store. That can be on your headset or on your desktop, but either way, make sure you're logged into the right account when you buy it. This is the software that your headset will run. There's a companion app that runs on your desktop to connect the two, which is called Virtual Desktop Streamer, and you need to get that too. To allow them to talk to each other, your headset and your computer need to both be on the same internet network. It's preferable for your computer to be plugged into Ethernet, and you also want to have your network set to private in your Windows network settings. If you experience stuttering, you may want to adjust the bitrate and VR graphics quality in the headset virtual desktop application. Some users need to disable sliced encoding and use H.264, and you'll have to restart for some of those changes to take effect. If you have a lot of trouble setting up virtual desktop, you can go to their Discord server to get support. Now, if you want to use virtual upper body tracking for chest and elbows, like I do, you're going to want to enable Quest 3's hand and body tracking in your headset's settings. Once you've done that, go to your headset's virtual desktop app and go to streaming settings, forward tracking data, and emulate trackers. The Quest 3's inside out tracking comes with a lot of emulated trackers. And since we have physical trackers for our legs and waist, we're gonna to wanna to disable those emulated trackers. To do that, we're gonna use Dantec's Virtual Desktop Body Tracking Configurator, which you can get for free on GitHub. And we're gonna open it up and we're gonna set it to only do the upper body tracking. You should now be able to see the emulated trackers attached to you in SteamVR. And if you ever load in and you see the emulated trackers underneath you in the floor or somewhere they're definitely not supposed to be, you want to just turn them off and on again in the MetaQuest settings, the same way that you turned them on initially. Now for the physical trackers. For each tracker, we're going to do the following. We're going to press and hold the button until the LED blinks blue. That means it's trying to pair. Then in Steam VR, you're going to click on the burger menu in the top left of the Steam VR UI. You're going to go to Devices, Pair Controller, and select the suspiciously Vive 3.0 shaped option. Your tracker should now pair automatically. You're going to repeat that step until all the trackers are out. 
Next, we need to calibrate the trackers so they know where they are. For this, we're gonna use Pushrax's OpenVR Space Calibrator, also on GitHub for free. Once installed, you should be able to see this as a launchable application on the SteamVR taskbar. You should see your receiver dongles that have been paired with SteamVR represented in the top right window of the calibrator as serial numbers. Since this is only referring to the dongle and not the tracker, the only way we can know which dongle is paired to which tracker at this stage is to turn all trackers off and turn on and calibrate just one at a time. The calibrator will abort if you try to calibrate a dongle that isn't paired to a tracker. So if it lets you calibrate, you'll know that's the right one. So to calibrate each tracker, we're gonna use one of our controllers to give the calibrator a reference. I'll be using my left controller, so that's what I'll select in the top left area. You're gonna to wanna to hold the tracker in the same hand as whatever controller you selected, click start calibration, and make a figure eight movement. The calibrator will show a progress bar as the tracker calibrates to each lighthouse. If the calibration is a bit off, you might need to calibrate a few times for your first calibrations, or try a slower calibration setting. Jesus Christ, how many times do I just say calibrate? <laughs> if this seems like a lot of calibration, don't worry, the next time you start a VR, you're likely only gonna need to calibrate at most one tracker and the rest will adjust to it. For me, after I had my three tracker set up working at startup, I'd only need to use fast calibration and just do one tracker. Anyway, you should now be able to see all of your trackers, both emulated and physical, attached to you in Steam VR. Lastly, we just need to get VR Chat to work with our FBT. So we're gonna start up VR Chat. We're either gonna to go to a big mirror in the world with one or spawn in your personal mirror with your radial menu. In your small menu, you're gonna click the button that says Calibrate FBT. Your avatar will T-pose and you should see all of your trackers represented in VRChat as spheres. And what you're gonna do now is tell VRChat how to account for any offset in the tracker positions. So you're gonna copy the T-pose that you see your avatar doing and then click both triggers to lock that in. Now when you're doing this, some of the spheres might be offset. You don't need to play Twister to try to line them up. If they're offset, even when you're perfectly T-posing, Pressing the triggers will tell VRChat that those trackers are inaccurate and that it needs to adjust them for you. So yeah, once you've done that, you now have full body tracking in VRChat. If everything's working fine for you now, you're done. If some things are a little bit off still, there's a few more things you can try to get it looking a little bit better. So one default thing that a lot of people don't like for full body tracking in VRChat is it inserts a little running animation into your avatar when you move with the joystick. Uh, a lot of people find that that breaks their immersion, so you can turn that off. It's called locomotion animation in your big menu and in tracking and IK. I have this setting turned off myself. You can also adjust arm versus height ratio, which is also in your tracking and IK. I personally had to reduce the setting a little bit. You may also want to adjust your IRL height here. I have this set to my IRL height. Yes, I am 198 centimeters, <laughs> but if it's still not matching, such as if you're using a long-legged avatar, you can try using different heights. But fortunately, there are many extremely well-made FBT-ready avatars, which you can find if your avatar isn't cutting it for you. When you finish playing for the day, remember to swap out your dongles for your trackers to allow them to charge. I do this and I've never had a tracker die on me or had to wait for them to charge. Some more optional stuff. You can also get software for turning lighthouses off and on with SteamVR. This is needed because originally all this equipment was designed for the Index headset. So without the Index headset, because we're using Quest 3, they're just gonna stay on forever because they're never gonna get the signal to turn off. So you might want to get this application since these units do make a little bit of noise. So you may want to turn them off when you're finished. At any rate, that about does it for my little tutorial. I hope this was helpful for you. Take care, brush your hair, and don't forget to breathe air. <laughs> what am I saying?